All right, in this video, this is for you KWGT users, and I'm going to show you how to take a widget and you can um, alternate between pieces of information inside of one widget. For example, here we have the time 213. I can tap on that battery icon and it switches over to a battery. I have 100%. I can check the weather. So uh, sunny and 57 degrees here. And I'm just basically cycling through you know, these three things, or I can use the arrows over here to go through all three of these in a certain order. Um, I can also go backwards as well. This is very similar to my list global variable tutorial for KLWP. However, we're not doing animations because this is uh, KWGT. And plus where we put the code in, it's not inside of animation because we're not doing animations. We have to do it inside of layer, uh, the layer of visibility of our pieces. So again, this is KWGT and let's go ahead and open up and have a look. So inside of KWGT, the pieces that you want to uh, hide or show alternating, uh, make sure you put each one in its own little overlap group. And I'm going to go over here to globals and what you want to do is you want to create a list global variable and you can call it whatever you want. I have a list global variable, it's called go, and inside of here I have three items. C stands for clock, W stands for weather, B stands for battery. Just You can give them full names if you want to, but you don't have to. Just something easier to type in when you go to code this. All right, you have your items and you have to create some buttons, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the buttons. Now, with the list global variable, there's multiple ways you can do it. For example, when I press these buttons uh, here, that this right here, that button there will always take me to the battery. This button right here will always take me to the clock, and this button right here will always take me to the weather. Well, let's go to the B button. The B button is going to be the battery button, um, whatever you may pick or choose to make for your battery button, but go over to the touch for that piece, and you want to toggle that global switch, that list global go, and you always want that to be B for battery. All right, go back and do something very similar for your C button or whatever button you may be making. This is my clock, this little watch icon. So go to touch, toggle global switch, make it set to where it's always going to be C for clock in this case. And then you guessed it, the same thing for W. Go over to its touch for weather and I want it to always be W when I touch it, okay? Some things to also keep in mind too, back inside of root, make sure your uh, entire widget has nothing applied to the touch. That way those touches won't interfere with each other. I'll still show you how you can get back into your widget um, through the or get back to the advanced editor and I'll show you where I have those right here in a moment. So um, I don't have anything touch set to the entire widget itself, as you can see right here. There's nothing set up for the entire widget. All right, now, the other thing we can do for our buttons, the next and the previous, what we can do, instead of going to individual items, you can just cycle through them with these arrows. So the next button that I have here, that's this arrow that you see here, and I have it set to touch, toggle global switch, and you can also pick either next value or previous value. This is how we can scroll through them, I guess you can say. Even though we're not uh, animating, we can still kind of toggle through these different settings. And then the previous button, I just want to show it to you, make sure, we have, make sure we have everything set up correctly. Its touch is going to be previous. All right, so we have all the touches set up. Again, these will go to individual items specifically. This right here will toggle through them, either going to next value like that or to go to previous value. All right, so I'm touching those buttons to do that. Now, how do I make these things change inside of here? I mentioned, so whatever things that you want to actually uh, go through, put them in their own overlap group. Now you could put them all inside of one big overlap group, but you still want to have the pieces. I have all three of these right inside of root. So clock. Clock, this right here is the 217. It has a border around it. Design, design it however you want, but what you want to do, all that stuff that makes up clock, I have it inside of its own overlap group. Go over to layer, and we want to adjust the layer of visibility. So I have a little code here. You'll check that, and you'll come up here to the calculator, but I already have that set. So the clock, the only time we want this thing to show is when GV go is equal to C. So remember, there's two ways that we can get to C. Either we can use the previous and next buttons or we can touch that watch icon. Either way, if GV go is equal to C, I want this layer to always be visible. Otherwise, I want it to never be visible. Um, you, can, you can do remove, but remove is not necessarily needed here. There is an important spot for remove, but that's not in this tutorial. So never will be fine right there. 
So if GV go equals C, we always want to see it. Otherwise, we never want to see it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the same code and we're going to change it to a B or a W depending on which group we're inside of. If I go to my battery group, everything that I have my battery stuff inside of, if I go to its layer of visibility, if GV go equals B, I always want to see it. Otherwise, I never want to see it. So by us doing the codes like this, we're only going to see the clock when GV go equals C. We're only going to see the battery when GV go equals B. And you guessed it for weather. If I go to its group and go to its layer of visibility, if GV go equals W, I always want to see it. Otherwise, I never want to see it. And by us using the, the different ways that we toggle through these buttons, okay, let me see if I can get out of my keyboard here. All right, and by us doing, uh, let me add one more piece to this entire thing. Let me go to plus, let me add some text, and I'm just going to leave that text right smack in the middle. It'll be all right. It ain't going to hurt nobody. I'll make that nice and big. Let me go over to paint. Let me just make it something that's going to be clearly visible. And for this paint, I'm going to go over to its text, and I'm going to let this show whatever my... Uh, you don't have to do this, but this is just for teaching purposes. GV Go, I want to see what GV Go is currently equal to. Right now, it's currently equal to C. So let me save this. Let me go back to the home screen. And now, since GV Go is equal to C, I want to see the clock. When I press this, this letter should change to B, and I should see the battery stuff. And as you can see, it did change to B, and there's my battery stuff that you saw at the beginning. Now, if I press this again, it's going to still stay on B. If I press the watch, it's going to change it to C for clock. And as you can see, the clock is in the background. And then if I want to check my weather, that's going to change that global variable go to W, which lets us see the weather. And then we can also go through them like this. That's doing the next. And this right here will do the previous. And as you can see there, you can make one widget, you can have multiple items in, inside of it, and you can toggle back and forth between them. Again, identical to KLWP, my list global variable tutorial there, except we don't have animations here. So there is a little bit difference. There's a different spot where you have to put those codes in. So I know for those of you who are using KWGT and not KLWP, maybe you missed out on that. That's why I wanted to share this with you, and plus I got the request for it. So one more thing I forgot to mention is how can you get back into the advanced editor by tapping on your widget? Because over here, if I'm touching here, that's not opening KWGT um, because I don't want that touch to interfere with me actually toggling through these items. And the same thing over here. So how can we get back into KWGT? Apply that touch to something else. For example, whatever you have showing right here in the middle. So I'll just tap on this space here and, and KWGT is going to open back up. And what you can do there is you can go to each individual piece, the clock group, this one that you see here. If I go over to its touch, I have a custom action and I have it set to open the advanced editor. And I have also applied that to battery. Its touch is also advanced editor. And then the weather its touch, whoops, not the weather icon, but inside of the weather overlap group, its touch is also the advanced editor as well. So regardless of which one is showing right here in the middle, I can have the clock showing, I can have the weather showing, I can have the battery showing. If I tap on that middle piece there, that overlap group, it will open up KWGT. And there you have it. That's how you can toggle items in KWGT, very similar to KOWP, using the list global variable. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.